So hi there, um, I'm Casey. I'm with the Matsu Convention and Visitors Bureau and we'll let um, a couple of people still come in that are just making their way in. So we'll just get started in a couple of seconds. Uh, but thank you guys for joining us. Like I said, we'll give it a, a minute or two as folks uh, make their way onto the webinar and then we will get started. <clears throat> Okay, well, well, we'll go ahead and get started here so we can get everybody out. Um, again, I'm Casey Ressler. I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager with the Matsu CVB. Um, thank you guys very much for joining us today. Uh, looking out the window, I'd rather be up in Hatcher Pass than, than sitting here in the office. So um, what a great day. Hopefully it holds for the holiday weekend. Everybody can get out and enjoy the valley and um, get outside and have some fun. So um, today we're going to be talking about one of our favorite areas in the entire valley, Hatcher Pass. Um, everybody loves to go up there in the summer, a lot of different things going on, new things. So we're going to uh, jump in and start talking about what to expect up there this summer, uh, new products, new tours, and how you can not only enjoy it yourself, but also pass the information along to your guests. Um, before we get started, everybody is on mute, um, but definitely feel free to ask questions in the Q&A box and we'll get to them at the end there. Um, definitely as many as you have. We're more than happy to sit here and talk about Hatcher Pass as long as you'd like. So, um, and then it is being recorded. I know a lot of folks have been watching the recordings rather than the live presentations, which is great. Um, that should be available on the Matsu CDB website, which is alaskavisit.com in the member resources section, probably by this afternoon. So um, if you can't join us live, or if you're looking to go back and find out more information, um, definitely feel free um, also in there is our previous webinars. So this is the last of four that we've had in May. Um, last week we had Highway Neighbors with, with an update from communities along the road system, which was very uh, informative. So if you missed that one, uh, go back and, and take a look. So, and if you have any questions about any of the webinars or any of the topics that we talked about today that you uh, think of afterwards, feel free to shoot me an email, uh, Casey, C-A-S-E-Y at alaskavisit.com and we will get you the answers. So today we're going to be talking about everything Hatcher Pass, as I mentioned. So we're um, happy to be joined by Scott Patridge. He's the general manager up at Ski Talk, not just a winter ski area anymore, as you'll find out. Uh, Mandy Garcia is the co-owner of Salmonberry Tours, and they are the concessionaire at Independence Mine. And then Sierra Hunsaker, she is the concessionaire at the Government Peach Chalet at the base of Hatcher Pass. So I guess first we'll get started with Mandy with an update from uh, Salmonberry Tours and Independence Mine. Thanks, Casey. Uh, we're super excited to be part of the panel today. Um, the Hatcher Pass happenings, what's going on in 2021 summer. Um, specifically, I'm gonna be talking about Independence Mine State Historical Park, which is a partnership between Salmonberry Tours, a local women-owned and operated uh, day tour company and the Alaska State Parks. So a little bit before we go is uh, dates and hours. This is what everyone wants to know. <laughs> uh, June 18 to September 30 is our published hours from now until Salmonberry gets, um, until Salmonberry stops doing this, which I, I hope doesn't happen. So if you're a tour operator or if you are a company and you want to send guests up here, we will be there from June 18 to September 30. The vehicle access is from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And the visitor center buildings will be open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Again, June 18 to September 30, vehicle access from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., and then all those visitors services are gonna be open from 10 to six. Next is a little bit of um, you know, an overview of Independence Mine State Historical Park. So this is a map. If you'd like a copy, email me at mandy at salmonberrytours.com. It's printable. Um, you can share it with your guests. You can share it with your friends and family. Uh, this is a really great layout showing the parking area and the different mine buildings that we have and, and access for. The interpretive signs are along the walkways, so it tells a little bit about each of the buildings, even if you can't necessarily go into them. 
But this year we do have interpretive signage and buildings open. When we talk about Independence Mine State Historical Park, we're really focusing on 1906 to 1980 and specifically the area or the, or the time frame between 1938 and 1951. That's when you think of Hatcher Pass and you see uh, the, the, the buildings up there and the mine structures, that was really a go between 1938 and 1951. So when you come on a guided tour or you start doing you know, self-exploration, you are going to be going through three open buildings this year. Again, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily, you can visit the mine manager's house, the bunkhouse number two, and the assay office. It tells a really great story of the mine, from the people of the mine in the mine manager's house to the hand tools that the miners would carry on a daily basis, and then the assay office, which is that milling process um, from the ore to the finished product. We're encouraging families to come on up and visit. Those are like two of the cutest kids I've ever seen in my life. I'm a little biased, uh, but we want you to take a hike. We want you to pan for some gold. We do have pan rentals or bring your own pan if you're Alaskan and got one. Um, the pan rentals are located in bunkhouse number two, which is pictured right behind those little cuties in the picture. You can pick berries in the fall. Um, we can do scavenger hunt for kids. So we've got printables inside bunkhouse number two. Um, for our mini adventurers. And we can, we really are encouraging people, you know, bring a picnic up with you. We have a snack shop in bunkhouse number two, but, you know, bring some sort of lunch with you and make a day out of it. We are offering field lectures this season, 10 a.m., 11, 1, and 2. We just ask people to meet us at the bunkhouse number two to sign up for the tour, pay for the tour. Salmonberry is a small group tour, so maximum 12 people per tour. Uh, unless you arrange a private excursion. We're gonna get you behind the scenes access when you do a 45 minute tour with us. So that means um, you get to go into the mess hall. Uh, you get to go into bunkhouse number two upstairs where the miners would um, sleep and live, see their little sleeping quarters. And depending on the group, we have the schoolhouse, which kids really love to sit in the school desks or the apartment building, which is actually um, the first building uh, that began construction about this time in 1937. So about this time this week. A 45 minute walking tour is about $15 per person, but again, Alaskan, senior, military, children, there's all discounts applied for that. The last type of group tour is, is a group tour. So if you have a small business and you want to bring you want to bring visitors up here, here you can feel free to um, call us 24 hour notice and a, a host will do a with your group and that's a meet and greet with five dollars per person and it gives time questions hear that ringing is that a yes okay it's gone um, sorry, everybody. I don't know if you could hear that in the background. Um, so anyway, group tours. If you are a tour operator, come on up. And it doesn't mean you have to have a bus. We're a small group tour operator. If you want your guests to be special and you want to include Independence Mine Hatcher Pass um, on your trip to Matsu Valley, then give us a call because it's a really good rate. Um, guides, you get free bag of popcorn, which is awesome. We love our tour guides. So this is Candace and I, we are getting ready to open the gate. The gate opens soon. I just got word that DOT is literally plowing the road today. Um, so don't get too crazy. We're not gonna be in full operation again until June 18 to September 30. But as soon as that road opens, feel free to um, walk on up there. You don't need snowshoes once the DOT plows, which is super nice. There's a lot of snow up there right now, so you probably wanna be prepared for that. But again, um, if we have early opening this year because of um, the early snowplow, you can find those, um, I guess, uh, early bird dates on our Facebook page or our Instagram. Please follow us for up-to-date information. And I look forward to your questions. Thank you, everybody.
Thanks, man. Thanks, Mandy. I know last summer, um, my wife and I did a private tour up there with you guys, led by you, of course. Uh, that was that was a cool experience because, like you said, you do get to go into some of the buildings that the general public doesn't get to do. So I highly recommend that. Ton of fun. Yeah, and it's something where you know in the past, um, it you had to pay to go into the park. Not not this year. So and not last year. So under Salmonberry, you don't have to pay to go into Independence Mine State Historical Park. The parking fee still applies with the state, you know, the state parking pass. I hope we all have one, right? As Alaskans. But um, you don't have to pay to go into the park. If you want that guided tour with yours truly or one of my tour guides, then you would um, have a, you know, a behind the scenes fee. So thanks for joining us, Casey. <laughs> and are you guys going to, I know that Bunkhouse too had like little snacks and things like that last summer. Is that the plan? Oh yeah, totally. We have a snack shop. Um, so I'm encouraging people to, you know, plan ahead, bring a lunch, uh, go to lunch before, or after visiting Hatcher Pass. But if you, you know, if you start to get a little snacky, we got you covered in the snack shop for sure. I even have like root beer. I love root beer. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you. Um, I guess next we'll go to somebody up in Hatcher Pass. Let's go to Scott at Ski Talk. So first, congratulations on an awesome winter. It was great oh, yeah, to finally thanks. see years and years and years of it. I think they've been talking about a ski area in Hatcher Pass since I was a kid, um, which was like five years ago. So, um, but no, that was great to see. I know a lot of folks were up there. So congratulations on that. And um, let us know some of the plans for the summer. Yeah, thank you. We, we definitely enjoyed the winter up here. We had a great long season all the way from November till the end of April. I think we got as much out of it as we could. And I guess our message now is, you know, don't forget about us, um, you know, as you drive on up to the uh, Independence Mine, um, you're going to you're going to roll right past us. Um, most of the days you're going to see the gate locked up here and it's going to kind of look like nothing is going on. Um, but we actually, it takes a, a full year to run a ski area and we are going to get a couple of summer programs going. Um, so right now, what we're, what we're doing is we're recruiting some board members. We've got a couple of open spots on our board. Um, and if you are interested in being a prospective board member, um, you know, check out our website. We've got a little flyer there. Uh, and then we're going to have a board meeting tomorrow night at 6 p.m. up here at the yurt at Ski Talk. So stop on in. Uh, for that, if you've got any interest in that type of thing. Um, we are seeking a caretaker up here, uh, someone that could bring up an RV, uh, live in it on site from July till about September. And once we get that caretaker, then it's going to open up the door for us to uh, provide some RV camping spots up here on the, on the weekends, like reservation only. Um, and that'll, you know, fill a need that's up here in the past because a lot of the spots get booked up pretty quick. Um, we're also seeking volunteers for summer projects this summer. We're going to be doing a lot of trail clearing. Uh, we're working under the yurt to try to build some space for a rental shop. And then we've got a lot of other little uh, buttoning up projects around here to, to get ready for next year. So if you're interested in, in volunteering, uh, being on the board, or being a caretaker, then email scott at skitalk.com and we can get you some more information on that. Um, after that, we're going to start doing a couple of courses this summer. Uh, June 23rd and 24th, we're going to be doing a youth outdoor safety and survival course. Uh, and so we're going to be looking at um, 10 essentials of outdoor equipment um, that you need to bring with you, trip planning, basic navigation, um, managing an emergency, survival training, team building skills, shelter building, fire starting, um, and then you'll gain a uh, certification and basic first aid through uh, the American Safe, Safety and Health Institute. Um, and that's gonna be for uh, 12 and up. So youth 12 and up, um, and that's June 23rd and 24th. And then right after that on June 25th through the 27th, we're gonna do an adults uh, wilderness first aid and CPR course. Um, and on both those courses, we're gonna have uh, about eight spots open. Um, and it's kind of hard to find these courses right now um, so we thought we would try to help fill another need for that. So the, the WUFA course and CPR um, is going to focus on scene safety, patient assessment, treating life-threatening in injuries and illness in a remote setting, patient packaging, stabilizing injuries, uh, notifying health, 
and you will get a certification in wilderness first aid, adult and child CPR and AED. And this is, this is a course that's recognized by scout, scout groups, workplace safety and outdoor industry groups. Um, and so both of those courses, you can find more information on them at uh, skitalk.com slash courses. We've got, a, we've got a page there where you can RSVP. Um, then we're also looking at doing facility rentals. So one, one nonprofit group has already gotten a hold of us this summer, onward and upward, and they're going to be doing a base camp type experience for uh, the youth that uh, participate in their programs. And so they're going to be camping out here um, a couple of nights during the week and, and using our facilities. And we're definitely open to, to nonprofits and for profits um, coming up here this summer and renting out our facilities and having your your corporate retreat, or if you want to have a wedding up here, um, we're, we're, we're starting to look into things like that. A um, little on later in summer, August, we're going to be at the fair. So we'll have a booth there for anyone that's interested in buying season passes and renewing your membership for next season. Um, come, come check out our booth at the fair and say hi, and, and we can give you more information on other things that will be happening. And then wrapping up the summer, uh, more into September, we're going to be doing blueberry ball again. You came out to that last summer, parking lot was full, people were riding the lift, uh, you know, beer garden, uh, kids events and stuff like that. So, um, and then a little bit kind of end of summer for us, October, we're planning on doing a ski swap up here. So you can get those old skis out of the closet, bring them up here and, and sell them to someone that, that needs them a little bit more than you if you're getting a new setup. So, and that's, that's about it. So it doesn't sound like too much and sounds like a lot at the same time, but yeah, don't don't forget about ski talk. We're still up here. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, I know we're focused on the summer, but um, maybe just an overall impression of how the winter went with the first season at ski talk. It was it was awesome. We had over nine thousand skier visits this this winter, and we we had a really long season. We were able to add on extra days. Uh, we were able to add on a ski school. Uh, and lessons and we are you know we're, we've been taking it slow obviously people have been waiting for a lift in Hatcher Pass for like 30 40 years but it's here and we're going to keep taking little baby steps and adding on more programs and and hopefully next winter can be just as successful as this one if not more yeah, yeah you guys did a great job I know we got a, had a ton of interest from folks asking about it and I'm happy to send them up there and um, yeah, real successful. So congratulations again on, on doing Thank that. Yeah. Bonnie just chimed in here um, that she skied 26 days this this winter. I think <laughs> you hung out with my boss more than I did this winter. Maybe. So that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, so well, let's go down to the base of Hatcher Pass then, where obviously it's gorgeous out. I don't even see a cloud in the sky there. Um, Sierra is with the Government Peak Chalet. Hi guys, thanks for having me on today. This is a spectacular day. I couldn't have picked a better day to come up here and, and share what we have going on at the chalet with you. Uh, my family and I manage this chalet for the borough. Uh, we pay them a rent and basically run our private business as a rental facility out here. Um, so we do a lot of private events and bookings. I am looking at keeping some more regular hours, but during the summer, it's just not people are in and out and it, there's not a peak use time. So it doesn't make much sense. It's all day long, every day, all summer long up here. But I'm gonna just show you guys, if I can flip my camera around, what we're looking at. I don't even know if I can. There we go, there's my button. You can see all the way out to Connect Glacier, the whole Chugach range. It's got a spectacular view up here. And the chalet itself is a fantastic place to host large groups of up to 150 people for seated dinners or uh, you can have as many as 300 in there but it's pretty tight um, we do a lot of social events mainly social events up here but there's also some political stuff but it's a polling place and um, a community center for a lot of the junior nordics program during the winter and in the summer it's mainly our um, event venue for private events. Uh, we've done a few updates and changes in here. The office space is now part of the private rental room. Um, perfect for weddings so that people can have a little private space or for races, a, a nice room for the referees and judges and volunteers to stop. We got new signage in our entryway here. Painted the walls a green instead of that orange that used to be up here. 
got the drinking fountains, the two full bathrooms, full service kitchen. And then our banquet hall, I won't spend too much time in here. Uh, we do have a couple of add-on services like set up and take down cleaning. And then I've got the canopy listed or up right now uh, from a couple of proms and weddings that we had this last week. Um, but this is our banquet hall that can hold up to 150 people comfortably for a wedding service or buffet style banquet. Um, we've also done some trade shows in here and open houses. So we've got some uh, pretty great uh, reasonable rates. Um, we're about $100 an hour to rent the space for private events and we're pretty flexible. Uh, we've got our uh, availability calendar that's posted up on our website and shows what we have available. And we're certainly looking at more options during the week and some shorter things. I, I like to keep the weekends to an eight hour minimum simply because it's a full day and people want to come up here for the reunions and special events. So, uh, but the weekdays, I would really like to get more regular openings uh, for shorter stints for tours and other options. So I'm certainly open any ideas that you guys have, if you'd like to get involved and do a partnership, I'd be open to that. And we look forward to having another great summer up here at the chalet. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like it's off to a good start with the weather up there for sure. Um, <laughs> it certainly is. Yeah, we've, we've had um, a couple of conferences up there in the last couple of years, and it's just the perfect venue with the reviews and um, the, the reception hall, banquet hall. Um, just a great spot if you're looking for, especially weddings. I'm sure you've probably got a ton of weddings this summer. Yeah, that's one of the things, oddly enough, um, as we've talked to a lot of our members, wedding tourism seems to be busy this summer. We've heard from a lot of folks that they're just slammed with weddings. So evidently during a pandemic, yeah, what we need is some overnighting up here. That's what we need is more overnight accommodations up in this area about yeah, we work with what we got. It is beautiful. And, you know, for the price, you really can't beat it. And, you know, it's just, it's nice to be able to offer something that's accessible. And uh, we do offer discounts for uh, multi-booking events and for nonprofits as well. So we do keep that in range for school groups and tours as well. Great. Yeah, and if anybody has any questions, feel free to uh, pop them in there and we will get to them. Um, so maybe not Hatcher Pass related, but kind of Hatcher Pass related. Um, and this is just a personal plea, I guess, is um, as many of you know, Matt Sue was just recently selected as the host uh, for the 2024 Arctic Winter Games, which is amazing. It just we're really excited about the opportunity. Um, it will bring in a couple thousand athletes and probably about 4,000 total in terms of uh, visitors, media, coaches, families, um, a huge undertaking. And we are just actually yesterday filled out and filed to form the host society. So now we're looking for um, board of directors and as well as committee members. And uh, it's going to take hundreds and hundreds of volunteers. So if you are interested in serving on the board or as a committee chair or even just as a committee member, we need everything from people with backgrounds in finance, administration, all the way down to sports specific um, events like timers for a biathlon. So um, if you're in, and we'll be at every one of the venues mentioned here on today uh, for some of the sports. So um, if you're interested in that or just want some more information about what kind of a time commitment it is, um, go ahead and email me, which is uh, Casey, again, C-A-S-E-Y at alaskavisit.com. Um, so one of the questions is, Mandy, do you know what DOT's timeline is for opening the road over the summit this year? Yeah, with the plowing that started today, um, if we want to assume that they're going to follow the same schedule as last year, they plowed the road up from the lower lot to the upper lot to the mine. Um, and then about a couple of days later, they went after um, the summit road. So I would say within a week of the, the mine road being complete, you could probably venture to see the summit. And I'll, I'll keep you posted on that too. Um, I should get a DOT update this afternoon. And then again, after uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, one of the questions that I had before that somebody emailed me is if um, they want to visit after hours, can they still park at the lower lot and walk up or is totally okay? Yeah, definitely. So the gate hours are from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then if you plan on like, say you did a late afternoon and you're like, oh, I'm going to get up to Hatcher Pass and just hang out and, and explore on my own. And you get there like 
4 or 5 p.m., but you think you're going to be out there for a while, I would just park in the lower lot and make the walk up the hill. It's not even half a mile. And um, that way you don't get locked in. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that was my next question is what happens when you're locked in? Um, well, Eli, if you're on the call right now, if you're on the webinar, I will be calling you, um, or I've got some friends in, in Hatcher Pass, but again, like as soon as that gate locks, um, our team goes home because they've already worked for 10 hours. So there's a $50 tow bill. So you can, we'll go, we'll, we'll unlock the, the gate for $50, but that just means I have to send somebody up. And that's not included in your Alaska state parks park fee. It is not included in your state park pass. No. no, no. We were, I mean, it was kind of fun. We have like this, um, this, this uh, loudspeaker and we're like, hey, time to go everybody, <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> and, um, you know, we only had to park in a couple cars last, last summer, but. It was yeah. a learning curve for them. So this year, hopefully they're uh, in tune and, and out of there. Yeah, totally. And um, usually we ring it an hour before. Um, so when we close up the shops and the buildings, it's like 6 p.m. We ring the we ring it and we try to there's also like a dinner bell and the manager's house, which I love. So we'll ring that and um, people start coming down the mountain pretty fast. So. <laughs> um, and I had a question, too, that was emailed ahead of us um, for Scott. So um, when, when Ski Talk is closed, that is closed, closed. People can't like park and then just walk up the hill on their own, correct? Uh, you know, we discourage it. Um, people do anyways, they, they park down there and, and then it, you know, sends off a little notification on my phone and I start looking at the security cameras and, and uh, you know, watch them roam around and look at the lift and take pictures and they usually walk back down the road. Um, so, um, you know, uh, yeah, there's a parking parking right across the street for the uh, government peak campground site. And that's that's a great place to park so that uh, just in case we do have something going on up here uh, and we need to get like a very large truck through the gate that you're not blocking the gate. And with as many amazing hiking uh, trails in Hatcher Pass, they don't need to be on the, the ski area. They can find go to Reed Lakes, right? It's, it's a pretty short hike up to the top of the lift and back down. It's yeah. it's not a very long, exciting hike, but uh, hopefully in the future, we're working on, um, we've gotten some trails grants and we're working on plans for trails to go further up the mountain. And we do hope that at some point, this is open all summer long, there's food up here, the yurt's open, and it would be a great place for people to come in and, and stop in and then go on a hike up a maintained trail. Um, and, and downhill mountain biking and stuff like that. So, um, you know, don't expect the gate to be closed every summer. Okay. And then I guess the last one I had ahead of time was for Sierra, um, and that was the trails at Government Peak. So they're open all summer long, uh, but that's kind of a separate from the chalet, correct? Yeah, the, the GPRA is a borough park, and they maintain the parking lot here with their bar parking fees. And I think they've got like six miles of trails. Mm -hmm. You can go all the way to the top of Government Peak. Uh, there's Blueberry Knoll and then several small trails um, winding and looping around each other for biking and cross-country skiing that are groomed in the, in the wintertime. Uh, during the summer, it's great for biking. A lot of fat bike tires up here and some, there's a train park. Like they've done a really good job of building options up here. My kids love it. And every time we get a chance to go out on the trails, we're out there. So it's a great spot right out the back door of my office. It's, it's a great place to be. <laughs> That's not a bad office to have. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Well, those are the only questions that I had sent beforehand and I don't see any coming in. So, um, but thank you guys uh, for joining us and thank uh, you, Mandy and Scott and Sierra. Uh, we just wanted to give everybody a quick little update about what to expect in Hatcher Pass this summer. Um, and get out and enjoy it. Obviously, the weather is gorgeous today, and, um, and stay safe and have a good holiday weekend. So thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you for the opportunity. This has been great. Have yep. a good one. Thanks, Casey. Yep. Thank you.